Hey what is up guys and welcome to my Old School RuneScape Barrows Guide. Around the release of Old School RuneScape I did make a Barrows Guide, however the methods in that guide are now quite outdated, so today I'm going to bring you a fully updated guide that has all of the new methods. So first and foremost, I will give you guys an overview of what Barrows is. Barrows is a mini game that is located just east of the town of Morton, and in this mini game you must defeat the six Barrows brothers, as well as navigate your way through the tunnels, ultimately to loot the Barrows chests in hopes of rewards such as runes, bull racks, elite clue scrolls, and Barrows items. So now let's take a look at all six of the Barrows brothers and go into what each of their special abilities are. Aaron the Blighted is the brother that uses magic. He has a max hit of 25 and his special ability is that throughout the fight he will drain your attack, strength, and defense even if you are protecting from magic. Next is Darok the Wretched, the first out of four brothers that use melee attacks. Darok the Wretched's set effect is that the lower health he is, the more damage he can potentially do. Once you get Darok below 10% health, his max hit can do upwards of 60 damage. The second of four brothers that uses melee attacks is Guthan the Infested. Guthan's set effect is that every time he does damage to you, he has a chance of healing himself the exact amount of damage that he dealt to you. Next we have the brother that uses range attacks, who is Carol the Tainted. Carol's special attack simply reduces your agility level, which can actually be quite irritating because it reduces your ability to run around the minigame, which slows you down significantly. The next melee using brother is Torag the Corrupted. Torag the Corrupted special attack is once again quite simple. Every time he deals damage to you, he has a chance of reducing your run energy. The sixth and final brother is Varak the Defiled. Varak's set effect actually has two parts to it. Firstly, he can ignore your prayer entirely, meaning that even if you have Protect from Melee on, he can still hit through it. And also, he can ignore your defense entirely, meaning that even if you have a very high defense bonus, he can still ignore that defense bonus and do a lot of damage to you regardless. Now that you know a little bit about the Barrows Brothers, let's talk about the most effective ways to kill them. So as far as the four melee brothers are concerned, the best way to deal with them is going to be with magic. Now on this guide, I'm only going to recommend you choose from two spells. First of all, if you are a lower level, I recommend you use Iben's Blast. Iben's Blast is a spell that is unlocked at level 50 magic, and in order to cast it, you need to use Iben's Staff, which is a reward from the Underground Pass quest. Now if you are going to use Iben's Blast, you need to upgrade your Iben's Staff for 200,000 GP, because if you don't upgrade it, it can only use 120 casts, which is good for about 2 Barrows chests, whereas once you upgrade it, it is good for 2,500 casts, which is a significant improvement. And if you are a higher level, I recommend you use the Trident of the Seas. The Trident of the Seas is a level 75 magic weapon that has its own built-in spell. Now obviously, because the Trident of the Seas is a higher level spell, it is going to be more effective, but if you cannot afford or if you just cannot use a Trident of the Seas, Iben's Blast is a fantastic alternative. Now I know a popular recommendation in some Barrows guides is the Slayer Dart spell, however I highly recommend you do not use that spell for Barrows. If we take a look at the requirements of the spells, Slayer Dart requires you to have 55 Slayer for the Slayer Staff, as well as 50 Magic for the spell whereas Ivan's Blast only requires you to complete Underground Pass and to have 50 Magic. Now Slayer Dart has a max hit of about 12, whereas Ivan's Blast has a max hit of 25, and in my opinion, Ivan's Blast is actually easier to obtain. Now let's talk about the two non-melee using brothers, Aram and Carol. As far as Aram goes, you can kill him effectively both with melee and range, however I would recommend using range. If you have 75 plus range and can use a Toxic Blowpipe, that is going to be very effective and I would highly recommend doing that. Another good range alternative is using a higher level shortbow such as you or a magic shortbow with either adamant or rune arrows. Now of course you don't have to use range on Aram, you can kill him with melee as well, however unless your melee stats are significantly better than your range stats, it probably will be a better option just to range him. Now onto the range using brother, Carol. Carol is most effectively killed by either using magic or melee. Now you might not think that magic would be effective against a ranger, however pretty soon in the guide I will explain why it is still very effective. In my experience, unless you have around 80 plus melee stats, it is always going to be faster to use magic against Carol, so go off of your own stats whether or not you should continue using magic with him or use melee. 
So, now that you know all about the Barrels Brothers and how to deal with them, I want to touch on a few different topics such as the importance of magic bonus, and also the use of ancient magics or binds. So, I'm sure that most of you have seen that people use magic at Barrows, but at the same time they wear melee armor which makes their magic bonus extremely negative, and maybe you're wondering how that works. Well, basically the five melee brothers, not counting Aram, have literally zero magic defense. Now Aram's a different story because he does use magic, that gives him quite a bit of magic defense. However, the other five brothers have absolutely no magic defense whatsoever. So despite the fact that your magic accuracy is extremely negative, you are still super super accurate with your spells. I just wanted to make that a point because sometimes I see people at Bardos that wear mystic armor and whatnot, and it really isn't necessary whatsoever for that reason. Now I'd like to talk about the concept of freezing brothers in place, whether you're using ancient magics or the bind spells. Now one of the main costs of Barrows is using prayer potions, however if you use the ice spells on the ancient spellbook or the binding spells on the standard spellbook, you can actually freeze the melee brothers in place while you mage them and you will not have to use prayer against them. Now this is not necessary but it can be very helpful with certain methods which we'll get into later. Next let's take a look at the best ways to get to Barrows and the best places to bank afterwards. So, the first and by far the easiest way to get to Barrows is by using the Shades of Morton minigame teleport. Now, in order to use this method, you will have to have completed the Shades of Morton minigame. As you can see, all you need to do is go into your minigame tab and select Shades of Morton and click on teleport, and once you've done that, you will appear very, very close to Barrows in the middle of the town of Morton. From here, all you need to do is run a little bit south and then run a bit east across the bridge and follow the path and you will be at Barrows. The second method of getting to Barrows is going to make use of the Swamp Boat shortcut that is located in the middle of Mortmire Swamp. Now the first way you can get to this shortcut is by going through the underground tunnel that is unlocked after the completion of the In Search of the Q quest. However, if you do not have that quest completed, you can also use the Fairy Ring code BKR. This will teleport you to a fairy ring that is very close to the boat, all you have to do is run a bit southeast from there and you can use the shortcut. Once you take the boat shortcut, you will appear at the edge of Morton, and you simply have to run east and then follow the path and you will be at Barrows. The third and final method of getting to Barrows is going to make use of the Mauritania Legs 3. Now in order to get Mauritania Legs 3, you do need to complete at least the hard Mauritania Achievement Diaries. Once you've unlocked these legs, you can teleport to the town of Berg de Rod from them. Berg de Rod is located just south of Morton, so once you teleport with these legs, all you have to do is run a bit to the northeast and you will be on the path to Barrows. These legs are going to be very important to a method I'm going to show you later on in the guide. Now, regardless of what method you are doing, once you have looted the Barrow's chest and you need to bank, what you should do is, is right-click on your dueling ring and teleport to Clan Wars. When you get to Clan Wars, you can then enter the White Portal to recharge your stats. At that point, you can head back to Barrow's using any of the methods that I just told you. So here is a look at a map of Barrow's above ground. As you can see, there are going to be six different hills on the ground, and each of these hills belong to a different brother. What you will need to do is go on top of these hills and dig with a spade to enter their tunnel and then attack them. The northwestern hill belongs to Varak, the northeastern hill belongs to DH, the central hill belongs to Aram, the southwestern hill belongs to Torag, the south central hill belongs to Carol, and the southeastern hill belongs to Guthin. So now let's take a look at the final tunnel you will have to go through at the end of a Barrow's run in order to get to the Barrow's chest where you get your reward. So as you can see, there are nine different rooms in this tunnel, and when you appear in the tunnel, you can spawn in any one of the four ladder rooms. Once you appear in one of the ladder rooms, you will only be able to open one of those doors. Find the door that you can open and go through it, and that will lead you along a path. Now what you want to try and do is find the door that you can open that will lead you to the center. There are four different doors located around the tunnel, as you can see they are connected to the Skeleton, Crypt Rat, Crypt Spider, and Blood Worms rooms. Only one of those doors will be able to be opened. What you need to do is make your way around the tunnel until eventually you find that door. Once you find that door, you will be prompted with a puzzle that you must solve in order to get in. So let's go ahead and take a look at those puzzles right now. So, there are four separate puzzles you can get, and the puzzle you get is entirely random. Every time you click on the door, you will be presented with a different puzzle, so if you get a puzzle you're bad at, you won't be stuck with that puzzle. Now, as you can see, there are four different puzzles on the screen, and every single answer is circled in red. So, if, say for example, you get the one on the top left, you will need to click that middle one as quickly as possible, 
because unfortunately when you get attacked by monsters around you, it will close out of that screen. So it's best to study this and memorize the correct answers, so that way once you get that puzzle you can very quickly react and select the right one, and then you can make your way into the center of the tunnel. And once you get to the middle of the tunnel, you can then loot the Barrow's Chest. However, I'm going to take some time right now to explain to you what factors affect what rewards you can get from the chest. Now while doing barrels, you may have noticed that you have a kill count tracker on your screen. This keeps track of the Barrels brothers you've killed and the amount of monsters you have killed in the tunnel. Now when it comes to Barrows rewards, the only thing that affects your chance to get a Barrows item is killing the brothers themselves. It is highly, highly debated amongst the RuneScape community what the best kill count to get is, but today I'm going to give you some legitimate factual information about what kill count does. So as I said, killing the Barrows brothers is the only thing that affects the chances of getting a Barrows item. If you kill all 6 of the Barrows brothers, you have a 1 out of 16 drop rate to get any one of the Barrows pieces. Killing monsters within the tunnel does not affect this Barrows item drop rate at all. However, what kill count does is increase your chances to get more runes and bolt racks. Now, people debate what the best kill count to get is. However, I can confirm for sure that the best kill count to get is 14. 14 is the cap. After 14, you no longer get better chances at improving your loot. However, once you get to 14, that maximizes your chance to get the most amount of bolt racks and blood runes possible from the chest. That is 100% factual, and again, I know it's highly debated, guys, but kill count does not affect Barrow's items whatsoever. What it does affect, however, is your chances of getting runes and bolt racks, and 14 is the optimal kill count to get if you want to get the maximum amount of runes and bolt racks. Well, my friends, I think I have now given you just about all of the information I possibly can about the Barrow's minigame. At this point, let's go ahead and take a look at the different gear setups and methods you can use. So, for the first gear setup, I'm going to show you the requirements is the completion of the Underground Pass quest for the Ivan Staff, and also you need to have 43 plus prayer for all the protection prayers. I also highly recommend you have 60 plus on your melee stats and 50 plus range if you plan on ranging Aram. So guys, as a general rule of thumb, as I get into these gear setups, just know that you can upgrade and downgrade where you need to. So say for example, right here I'm wearing an Amulet of Glory, if you happen to have an Amulet of Fury, you can go ahead and wear that. So guys, these gear setups are going to be just kind of samples, as like lower level setups that you can use, so I can show you guys that even if you don't have optimal setups, it will still work just fine, but just keep in mind that you can upgrade or downgrade wherever you need to. So this first gear setup is a great example of a lower level gear setup that will be very effective for Iron Man accounts or lower levels in general that are just starting out Barrows. As you can see right now I have on full rune, rune gloves, climbing boots, an Ivan staff, an Ardoon cloak, a Namelet of Glory, rune arrows, and a ring of dueling. In my inventory I have a spade, a couple of house teleports, I have the runes for Ivan's blast, I have the best dehyde top and bottom I can use, a magic short bow, a Ava's Accumulator, a Dragon Skimitar Switch, a couple of Prayer Potions, a Restore Potion, and the rest food. Now with this gear setup, I'm going to assume that you're not going to use Binds or any kind of Freezes. You're just going to kill the brothers straight up and only go for one chest per run. That being said, you should not need any more than two Prayer Potions. As long as you have at least the stats that I recommended, you will use around one to two Prayer Potions per chest. So, for the second higher level gear setup, I highly recommend that you have 70 plus defense for Barrow's gear, 75 plus magic for the Trident of the Seas, however, Ivan's Blast will still work. I also highly recommend that you have access to the Ancient Spellbook for the freezing spells, however, once again, Entangle or Snare will also work. So guys, the biggest difference between this gear setup and the other two gear setups is that with the low level setup and the speedrunning setup, you really are only going for one Barrow's chest per Barrow's run, However, with this high level setup, you're going to be trying to do as many chests per run as possible. And the way we do that is by bringing freezing or binding runes, and also bringing things to heal us like bones to peaches or full guffins. Now I realize full guffins is very expensive, so I'm assuming you guys might not have that, which is why I am not wearing it. But if you have guffins, make sure you bring that, it'll help a ton. 
What I do have on, however, is a good mixture of Barrow's gear to give me very high defensive bonuses. I also have my Trine to the Swamp and other just general good gear. Now, as I've mentioned before, a Trident of the Seas or the Swamp is the best magic weapon for Barrows. However, if you cannot use it, Ivan's Blast will always work fine, but it does slightly change your approach. If you have a Trident of the Swamp or a Trident of the Seas, you can use Ancient Magics with it. However, if you're using Ivan's Blast, you cannot. So just keep that in mind, if you do want to use this method but you don't have a Trident, you are going to have to use either Bind or Entangle to go along with Ivan's Blast. Now as far as your inventory goes, bring your best melee weapon, a Toxic Blowpipe or a Magic Shortbow for Aram, a DI top and bottom, a Spade, some House Tabs, either Freezing Runes or Entangle Runes to go along with Ivan's Blast, obviously that'll change depending upon what you're doing, uh, Bones of Peaches tabs to heal yourself, some Prayer Potions, and some Sharks. And the third and final gear setup is going to be based around doing barrows as fast as possible but still banking after every chest so that you use little to no supplies whatsoever. For this method I highly recommend that you have the full graceful set, stamina potions, and you without a doubt need Mori Tanya Legs 3 for this method to work. So as you guys can see right now I have on full graceful, a trident of the swamp, an occult necklace, a book of darkness, and a ring of dueling. Now again guys, the idea of doing this is ma is minimizing your weight so you can run around as much as possible and complete the actual Barrows run as quickly as you can. So I'm wearing things like the Occult Necklace to boost my magic damage just to speed up my Barrows kills that much faster. Now if you take a look at my inventory, I have a Toxic Blowpipe, an Amulet of Fury Switch, a Whip and a Defender, a DDS, Moritania Legs 3 which again are very important, a Spade, an Emergency Prayer Potion, 4 Stamina Potions, a Super Attack and Strength, and some Sharks. Now this is not the fastest way to do Barrows, however the idea behind this method is to do Barrows runs as quick as possible without using any supplies. Now the reason why Moritania Legs is so important is because they have unlimited teleports that get you very close to Barrows. So the way you do this method is, is you use Moritania Legs to get to Barrows, do the barrels run as quick as possible by constantly running around, and then banking as soon as you loot the chest, because when you do that, you use effectively no supplies, but you can still speed run barrels quite quickly. So there is one more method I'm going to bring up, even though I don't recommend doing it. Um, there is a method where you just kill one barrels brother in an attempt to just rush and get those brothers' items. Now this might seem like a decent idea, say for example you just want Guthin's pieces. You might think it's a decent idea to just kill Guthin and loot the chest, because then you only have a chance of getting Guthin's items. However, I'm going to explain why this really is not a good idea at all. The way Barrow's drop rates work is that you have a X out of 384 drop rate to get any specific item. Now because there are 4 items per brother, if you just kill Guthin, you are only going to have a 4 out of 384 drop rate, which equals 1 out of 96. So if you are only killing one brother, for example Guthin, you have a 1 out of 96 Barrows items drop rate. That means you would need to do roughly 100 Barrows chests before you could expect an item. So it might seem like a decent idea to just rush Guthin because his items are so expensive, but I assure you if you're trying to make money, it is not worth it at all. The only way I would remotely recommend this is if you're an Iron Man and you only have like one armor piece left to go, then it's an okay idea. But for all intents and purposes, guys, do not only kill one brother. It makes it so unbelievably rare that it just becomes a waste of your time. So one last piece of information I would like to cover before I show you guys some Barrows runs is which order to kill the Barrows brothers in. So once you dig on top of a Barrows brother's hill, you can then search their sarcophagus. They will either spawn or you might potentially get the tunnel. Now five of the brothers will appear when you search and one of them will give you an option to enter a tunnel. When you find the one that gives you the option to enter a tunnel, you need to save that one for last. Apart from that though, the order in which you kill the Barrows Brothers doesn't particularly matter, however I highly recommend you leave Aram for last. Aram throughout the fight will drain your stats, so unless you have Restore Potions, it's a very good idea to save Aram for last, otherwise you could potentially have to do the whole Barrows run with drained stats. Other than that though, I guess for my personal preference, I do DH, then Carol, then Varak, then Guthin, then Torag, and then lastly Aram. And obviously one of those will be my tunnel, but uh, honestly, like I said, there really is no perfect order to kill them in. Just make sure you leave Aram for last.
Well, now that I've talked your ear off for the past 20 minutes, it is time to actually do some barrows. Hopefully you guys have learned a lot throughout this guide and you can actually apply that knowledge to doing Barrow's Chess on your own. However, some people are just straight up visual learners and learn the best if they just watch somebody else do it. So with that being said, I'm going to do one Barrow's run with each of the different gear setups and I will stop and do some commentary here and there to uh, add some more tips. Eyes in the sky, gazing far into the night, I raise my hand to the fire but it's no use cause you can't stop it from shining through it's true baby let the light shine through if you believe it's true baby won't you okay so at this point i'm about to enter the tunnel now as you can see my tunnel brother is varak so i'm going to show you guys a quick way that you can actually safe spot a melee brother in the tunnels it's very, very simple. Um, every time you open a door within Barrows, you can force something to spawn. So if you open doors long enough, you can force your Barrows brother to spawn. And by using this ladder in the middle of the room, you can actually safe spot them and use no prayer at all. So if you give me a bit of time, I can uh, show you guys how that's done. Now as you can see, I got Varak to spawn on this side of the door, unfortunately, and I don't want him to be there. If you want him to go away, all you need to do is run away. Uh, if you run away far enough, he will actually disappear, so... If he does spawn on the wrong side of the door, just run away a bit and he should disappear, and then you can keep trying. Okay, so that other side wasn't working for me, so I came over here and I got him to spawn. Now you might be thinking, well, there's no ladder here, how are you going to safe spot him? Well, Barrows is a bit buggy. Um, despite the fact that there is no ladder here, the game still thinks that there is a ladder here, so what you need to do is bring Varak towards the middle of the room. You can see where the ladder should be in this like dark middle spot. All you need to do is bring him to this side, turn your run on, and run over here. As you can see, your character will run around the, rat the ladder that isn't there. Again, the game thinks it's there. And there you go. Now you can safe spot a melee brother without using any prayer at all. Okay, so I've made my way around the outside loop, and as you can see, I've found the door that is going to lead me to the inside. And when you first start Barrows, this can be a bit tricky trying to time this, but uh, basically when you open this puzzle, you're going to get interrupted. So what you need to do is as soon as you see the monster hit you, instantly click on the door and try and answer it. So I'm going to do it right now, and it's that one. So it does take a little bit of practice, but uh, there we go, guys. Make sure you kill your last brother, find your way to the middle, do your puzzle, and at that point, you can then get kill count if you want to. Alright, now onto the higher level method. It is going to be essentially the same as that first method, except now you won't use any prayer because you can freeze everything. Now kill count while doing this method is actually very important. If you bring full Guthans, most of your healing from Guthans is going to be while you're killing these little guys. Now if you do not happen to have full Guthans but you did bring Bones to Peaches, be sure to drop some sharks while you're doing kill count. That way you can pick up the bones and use Bones to Peaches tabs to give yourself some free food and you won't have to waste any sharks. Now for this method, rather than using a dueling ring to go to Clan Wars and heading back to Barrows, you should instead backtrack your way out of the tunnels, go up the ladder, and then get ready for another Barrows run. Well, time for the final method, which is the speedrunning method. Honestly, there really isn't much to commentate while doing this one. Just remember while speedrunning, if there's ever a point where you are walking, you are doing it incorrectly.
Well, my friends, that is going to be it for this guide. I know it was a long one, but then again, that's what I do. I make long guides. There was a lot of information to get in, so hopefully you guys learned a shit ton from this guide. If you did enjoy the guide or it helped you out, feel free to hit that like button. I'm sure, as you can imagine, these things take a very long time to make, so hopefully this guide helped you out. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I will see you all later.